Hello and welcome to Celtic Down Under. My name is Laura and we are joining you to close out the reviews of, or the previews I should say, of the Group D teams with Tunisia. I'm joined as always by Liam. Liam, I'm not going to lie, this is not one I've been looking forward to and a quick glance over the squad uh, suggests that I was right to be concerned. No, I mean, the, the fact that uh, I've had to go with a completely random shirt choice here because I do not have a Tunisia shirt and I'm not particularly interested in getting one um, kind of speaks for itself. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, shirts, though, I have to say, um, as a shirt collector yourself, I quite like to um, to discuss shirts with you because it, it's something that I'm getting into myself at the moment. But I'm going to show you this. This is the... Um, this is the oh geez I've, I've lost you but this is the <laughs> this mm. is the Tunisia World Cup shirt now I think personally that that's a little bit of an underrated banger for me um Kappa do know what they're doing they've got that lovely Venezia shirt from this year yep. um I, I think you know if you look at that design obviously wouldn't look fantastic on as unathletic a body as mine but uh, apparently the pattern in that is something to do with um, the armour that uh, Tunisian warriors used to wear. Uh, I'm going to say back in the day, that sounds very um, uneducated, but that's that's the only way I can think to describe it. What's your thoughts on that as a kit? Am I am I getting a little bit too excited to say that that's, that's a decent little number? No, I, I, like, um, I like shirts that go for that sort of um, historical... Um, sort of historical event kind of woven into the fabric. Um, Mexico have done a number of shirts of that with kind of Aztec patterns in recent years. Um, yeah, I, that's that's not a bad wee shirt, that actually. Um, and also, I couldn't get a picture of it in time, but they have an absolute banger of like a, a bottle green third kit which I would say keep your eye out for as well. Kappa absolutely knocking out the park for them. Um, mm. So if nothing else, keep your eye out for Tunisia's kits at this World Cup because they could look pretty, pretty decent, I would say. Um, mm. That's one that I'm probably going to order after a few beers watching a Tunisia <laughs> game at some point. <laughs> I'm telling you here and now, there is no way I'm going to watch Mexico in that lovely cream and red number and not end up ordering one. I'm yep. telling you here and now. Yeah. Uh, but we listen. We could do we could do an entire preview of the World Cup kits if we had time, but unfortunately we don't. Um, let's get back to talking a little bit ch about Tunisia now. Obviously, they have to qualify through the African route. Um, mm -hmm. You were discussing a little bit before we came on air that there might have been a little bit of controversy around how that happened. Do you have any more information on 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 what exactly that is that's happened? I'm just uh, I'm just pulling up the stats on that. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, let me see. Let's uh, let's, the... put, let's put it this way. Uh, mm -hmm. Potentially, Mohamed Salah is not at the World Cup, uh, 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 and that's because of Tunisia. Yeah, um, but the thing is, with Tunisia, they uh, they have not changed their manager since. Uh, since 2019 so that mm -hmm. is uh oh wait a minute sorry they changed the coach in january i do apologize <laughs> so, <laughs> so they most certainly have <laughs> um no what i was going to say is that since the new coach came in they've recorded some pretty decent results they went mm -hmm. to japan and although they lost 5-1 to brazil um in september before that they were in japan the kieran cup they beat japan and they mm -hmm. beat chile 3-0 and 2-0 respectively. Um, I would suggest that Japan is not a particularly um, a, a, a climate that most Tunisians would be used to and uh, probably not uh, you know, not a particular quite, quite a long journey for them as well yet yeah. they went there beat beat the hosts and beat Chile who are, who are no mugs so you know you can't maybe read too much into what is basically glorified international friendlies, but it shows that they can mix it with higher ranked teams when when they have to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not going to do anybody the 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 absolute 
disservice of running through the entire squad because I have to say, uh, as far as um, the standard of squads go, it looks about one of the lowest that I've seen, um, if you judge it on, on the clubs that they play for alone. So it's going to be... It's going to be difficult to to see that they come out with with any um with any you know results out of this this World Cup. But I have to say, I think uh the the only player that I think sticks out with any legitimate kind of star power there is um Wabi Kazri, who plays for Montpellier. Um, now thirty one years old, but one of the most capped Tunisian players in history. Um, mm. th- this is very much being billed as a swan song for him and a, and a chance for him to really, um, you know, make a, a lasting mark for Tunisia at, at this World Cup. Um, mm. Do you know much about him? I, I have to say I didn't before I started looking into Tunisia, but it does seem that a lot of the marketing and things like that is centred around him for this World Cup for Tunisia. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's he is the highest profile player. Uh, however, I'm going to throw another name at you that okay. I think is uh, worth watching. Uh, we talked a wee, we talked a wee bit previously about the the Turkish league and how it is. Uh, sorry, not Turkish. I do apologise. They're not Turkish. They're Hungarian. I got Ferenc, I got Ferenc Varos and Fenerbahce mixed up. I'm sorry. It's, it's early in the morning. I've not had my coffee yet. Yes, fair right. enough. Fair sorry. enough. Uh, Alisa Lyduni. Li- Li- mm-hmm. Isa Laiduni, he plays for uh, Ferenc Varos, a 25-year-old midfielder. Now, the interesting thing for him is that he had the opportunity to go with Algeria or France, who are, were at the time were both higher ranked than Tunisia, but he chose to play for Tunisia. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think this is a guy who is clearly quite passionate about playing for his country. And it's uh, it's good to see that um, because he's obviously going to have a harder time getting to the World Cup with Tunisia than he is with France or possibly Algeria, even though Tunisia are here this time and Algeria are not. Um, traditionally, Algeria tend to do better in the African competitions. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's interesting that uh, that he made that choice. And he is one of these guys that is widely tipped for a move to a bigger European club. Um, after the tournament. So, you know, 25 years old, he's at the point now where he will be looking for that big move. Uh, Fer and Chavaros are, a, you know, a team with good good European history, but mm-hmm. in the current state of play, not a team that's going to, you know, he's not going to be able to retire on the wage he makes there, put it that way. Um, no, that's true, but I have to say, uh, and I've been storing this one up, uh, if him or his Tunisian um teammates do anything of any note at this World Cup, it'll be me who's going for a wee lie, Dooney, but um, listen. <laughs> oh, all those dad jokes I shared with you and it's finally rubbing off on you. My work here is done. Listen, yes. uh, I, I, I try not to disparage these teams too much, but I mean, I look at it and I don't know, from a Scottish point of view, I think surely surely we could be there if a team of that, that calibre can be there, but it's it's maybe me being a little bit too harsh. I mean, the, on, in one sense, you can look at it the other way and say that the only way that these countries are going to improve is by being at World Cups and having their, their standard dragged up by everybody else that's there. Yeah, um, Absolutely. No, I mean there are. There's probably about half a dozen teams at this World Cup that I think if Scotland played them tomorrow, we'd beat them. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But unfortunately, Scotland are in Europe, and Europe has probably the the highest concentration of uh, high profile, uh, high ranking teams in the world. So you're always going to have to beat at least one really good team to get to the tournament. Yeah. Whereas Tunisia, you know, Egypt. Sure, they've got Salah, but they're not exactly <laughs> not exactly a team that are going to, you know, shock anybody in, in, with with a, by beating Brazil or anything. So I think uh, I think that getting past them is an achievement at an African level, but at a World Cup level, it doesn't really amount to very much. So oh, absolutely. Um, um, lo- looking ahead at the at the fixtures for them, let's let's 
or, or I'm uh, certainly I'm going to try and be a little bit more positive. I like to look at the fixtures as we've done for every team and just get a little bit of an idea of how the how the group could shape up. Like uh, looking at Tunisia specifically, mm. not not the most difficult tie in the group for them um, against Denmark. They could have been starting off worse if they had, as Australia have, um, be playing France in that opening fixture. There's a little bit of something there that says to me if they can sneak a wee point against Denmark and then they've got Australia, who I think are maybe a little bit closer to their level, it might not be a totally lost cause for, for Tunisia. No, I mean, they they are unfortunate in the sense that they're playing France last. However, yeah. as we've said with other teams, if France win their first two games and are already through, and if Denmark and Australia perhaps draw... Uh, then France would be in a position where they wouldn't necessarily need anything from Tunisia to win the group and, you know, might ease off a wee bit, at least subconsciously, and that might give Tunisia a chance of stealing something. Um, But realistically, I think this is a group with two very clear-cut qualifiers in it and two also-rans, and unfortunately I think Tunisia are the weaker of the two also-rans, so... Yeah, um, I'm just looking at that thinking, I wonder if I'm even going to get to see many of these games with the timings that they're at, <laughs> but that's, that's, my own, that's my own problem being a, a working person as I am. But, um, you know, I just think in this situation, perhaps regardless of what the form guides say, regardless of what the, the lists of clubs that these players play for say, regardless of anything, they are there, they have three matches to throw caution to the wind and they could potentially... You know, they've got a chance there to just say, nobody's expecting anything of us. Let's go out and give it our all. And we've seen teams do it before. There's no reason why Tunisia can't do that here, is there? No, I mean, at the end of the day, this, you know, the World Cup has, you know, it is the the best teams in the world and England. Um, So, (laughs) uh, you know, I, I, I think you have to give respect to whatever countries get there. Because the fact is, they're there, we are not. So yeah. clearly, yeah. Tunisia are doing something right and Scotland are doing something wrong. So yes. as much as we don't rate this team and don't think they'll do much in the tournament, we do have to give them respect just for being there. Um, Absolutely. Because what, what would we give to be where they are right now, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um uh, With that said, I think, um, I think that's all we have to say about Tunisia. Um, so... This this basically covers every um, Group D team that we have have already covered. We've covered France, we've covered Denmark, we've covered Australia. Um, has has doing these videos has recovering the teams and the the amount that we've done the conversations that we've had. Has it changed your outlook on what the outcome is going to be from the group? Are you starting to think, oh, maybe I didn't know as much about that team, and they might they might force a force an issue or. It, it, is it reconfirming in your head what you thought would be the case? Um, no. This, this, this might be commercial suicide to say this on a primarily Australian podcast, but uh, um, I think looking at the Australia team, it has hit home to me just how difficult it is going to be for them to get out of that group. Uh, I think... Listen, we can be self-deprecating about it. The fact of the matter is they've got a heavy representation in their squad from the Scottish leagues, yeah, and, and, and for me that, that that's not World Cup level, but you know maybe maybe I'm being a bit too harsh. Yeah, but um, they are. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I think I think Denmark are going to win this group. Yes, right. Denmark are going to win the group. I think, but looking at the opposition, I think France will sneak through in second, mm-hmm. even though they are going to underperform. Yeah, and. That then sets up the mouth-watering potential of Argentina against France in round two, which will be a very, very interesting game. It will indeed, and we'll see how that goes. Um, Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this review of Group D. 
Um, we have only a few groups left to go and the, the World Cup is fast approaching. We hope you're enjoying this series of videos and don't forget to watch all the rest of the ones on the channel if you're looking for a bit of a build-up to the World Cup. Only a few days away at this time of recording, but of course we will make sure that all the teams are covered by the time they play their first match. Uh, Liam, thank you very much for joining me and we'll see you to start reviewing Group E. See you then. See you then.